Welcome back. The Eurasia Group announcing the top risks for 2021 and the company's annual forecast of potential risks most likely to play out over the course of the year. And here are the top five risks. 46, Joe Biden's administration, long COVID, climate, U.S. and China tensions, and the global data reckoning. Let's talk about it. Joining me right now is the president of Eurasia Group and G Zero Media president, Ian Bremmer. Ian, it is great to see you this morning. Happy New Year to you. I always look forward to talking to you about your listed risks for the country. Tell me about the incoming Biden administration and what the risk is specifically, Ian. Specifically, it's that the United States is the most powerful country in the world. We're the largest economy in the world. We are also by far the most politically divided and dysfunctional of all of the advanced industrial economies. Uh, we saw that play out very tragically on January 6th. We're seeing it play out very tragically with the first non-peaceful transfer of power in your and my lifetimes. Um, and the fact that a majority of Trump supporters uh, believe that the incoming uh, Biden administration is illegitimate. The election's been stolen against them, and they're angry, and they intend to take, at least some of them, intend to take action about it, um, is something you couldn't see in Japan or Germany or Canada today. It just could not happen. Uh, and, and in fact, those countries are going yeah. through uh, per perfectly peaceful transitions. But in the United States, for many deep and structural reasons that have been coming for a long time, uh, American institutions have gotten weaker and they are seen as less legitimized. And again, for the, at least, you know, with COVID, which was our risk number two, we have vaccines. Thank God. They're more, they're better than anyone would have expected. Even a couple months ago, Maria, with America's political division and dysfunction, uh, there is no vaccine. And uh, you saw that again, you saw that yesterday uh, with the impeachment in the House, almost a party line vote. There is no unity. There is no coming together. And, and that, that's a very dangerous thing to happen, especially given the level of crisis that we still face in the United States right now, given the economic challenges yeah. and coronavirus. Yeah, I think this is a really good point. But, you know, Ian, Joe Biden has said he is going to try to get unity and try to bring the country together. Number one, is he going to be able to be successful in that? He has said that many times. And then I got to get your take on Iran as well as China. We've been talking about China all morning long. We know that China wants to replace the United States as the number one superpower. There are really dangerous stories around that. And then on Iran, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo accusing Iran earlier this week of expanding ties with Al Qaeda by allowing senior operatives from the terrorist group to set up a new base in Iran. Well, Maria, What's your a, take on lot. those threats? That's a lot that's threw at me. Uh, yes, really it's a lot. With and it sounds like the fire. threats are a lot. But I know, I know, I know. Believe me, there's enormous volatility uh, this year, a lot of uncertainty geopolitically. But we'll start with Biden. But there's no question that Biden's personal orientation is to reach across the aisle uh, to the Republicans. You know, for decades as a senator, how closely he was able to uh, work with a number of the Republicans in leadership, including McConnell. Uh, the, you know, if anyone could do it, if anyone was inclined to do it, it would be Biden. But in this environment, uh, it's going to be incredibly hard. I mean, in fact, the easier thing is the fact that uh, the, the, yeah. the, the Democrats now have taken both of these seats in Georgia. At the very least, it's much more likely you get the $2,000 checks, you get $3 trillion, let's say, of additional relief and stimulus and investment over the course of 2021. And while that's only a Band-Aid, yeah. it's a big Band-Aid, and that money goes to workers and states facing bankruptcy, whether they're red or blue. So I think that yeah. helps. But I, I don't, I don't, and also yeah. let's keep in mind that Biden doesn't have to just reach across the aisle to the Republicans. He also has to reach across the aisle to the left and his own party, yeah. which is also increasingly that very divided. That's a very good point. Very hard to do. That, that's very a really good point because, yeah, you've got a mix within the